Earth hath not anything to show more fair. Dull would he be of soul who could pass by a sight so touching in its majesty. That, in the words of the poet Wordsworth, was London at the time of Napoleon. But London in the 1960s is a much greater London, rich in history, culture and social development. Housing is perhaps London's most urgent problem. Much has already been done. The old jumble of cramped factories and slums are being swept away. They're being replaced by cheerful, well-designed new homes where three quarters of a million Londoners live happy, healthy lives. The Elephant and Castle in central London was part of the futuristic vision of the 1960s. Now, just one generation on, it's due to be demolished to make way for a new master plan, the local council's latest vision. There are many ways to create a vision. Other cultures consult with animal spirits to summon theirs. Could I find my own vision? Another way to see the future of the Elephant and Castle. Hiya. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 I'm Marcus. Hello. Hi. We're the Elephant Castle team. Hiya. Hi. Hi. My name is Ola Agbamoni and I'm the project director for the rehousing of the Hay Gang. My name's Alison Bailey and I'm doing community engagement on the Elephant Castle team. My name's Matthew Rees and I'm a project officer for the Elephants and Castle team. Hello, my name's Dave Ware, I'm assistant project director for the Elephant Castle team for development of the Elephant Castle area. I'm um, Tony Mosley, I'm the other assistant director of the Elephant Castle project. So the plan is over the next, next uh, couple of days, I'm going to be really just wandering around the Elephant of the Castle, and really making us almost like a spiritual survey of the place, trying to find out perhaps what existed here before, before anything happened, before there was concrete, before there were people here, um, looking back that far and going on journeys, in my imagination, but very personal journeys, to try and get in touch with some of these ancestral spirits perhaps, and then trying to relate that to what's going to happen to the future. what the Elephant Castle has gone wrong. I don't know what it is. Something wrong with it. Definitely not the Elephant Castle now, not when I was born. You've been there a long time? 63 years. There's not enough in it. Keep knocking up on your feet, is it? It's all changing though, isn't it? Well, it's both changed. I don't, this is all coming down. Everything's coming down here, everything. Come, 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 Right for the birds to come in, Ernie. Yeah, is he? Is he house trained? Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. He ain't gonna mess on the floor, is he? No, he's all right. <laughs> so, 
So well, how long have you been here, Ali? 35 years. So when those trees out there were planted? Yes, they were saplings, they were little babies. Yeah. They were babies for that. So I remember, five I remember years. planting them. So that was, that was that the yeah. right at the beginning? Yeah. The, <coughs> during the first flat. So they was moving people in, they was landscaping. Of course, with the landscaping comes the grass and the trees, doesn't it? Yeah. And, uh, it was great, I mean. I wonder they ever survived, because you know what children are like, they, they never touched them. They put little guards around them, the gardens, and that was it, they just grew and then eventually you have to take the guards away because the trees were out here. Yeah. Yeah. Did people like it when they moved in? Yeah, they were well pleased because it was brand new, you know, and everything was new. The whole estate was new and it looked like, it was great, it was terrific. Yeah. yeah. Everything sort of went downhill from the 80s to, to, to the present time now where we we're in a decant now, aren't we? You know, decant means they're moving Demolition, you all out, yeah, and they're they going to demolish the whole so area. You have to decant. Right. Yeah, they have to move you on. Yes. So, which is not very pleasing to some of us, but there you go. Yeah. They call it progress, obviously. Yeah. We call it something else. <laughs> I need to know the place without using thought. I need to physically match myself up against it. We just sell general pound, 50p, pound stuff. Anything, anything we can get at a reasonable price. We just sell it and people come and buy it. It's all odd, oddments, really, bits and pieces they could do with. All them ones down there, I mean, God knows how many thousands of flats are on there, but I've probably gone far from the shut now, and then people have moved. But all the others, I can't see where they're going to put them. Because you tell me where they can find another few thousand council places. It's they haven't got them, have they? It's kind of upside down logic, isn't it? Get rid of the well, of course it is. Get rid, get, shut it down. They might get like a ghetto for the ones that are in there or a rat trap for the ones that are in there who can't get out. And then they leave it there for years, won't they? Then they'll probably flatten it, leave it another few years. And then some rich developer come in, they put all brand new flats here for like half a million pounds for a bed sit. And say, oh, we're going to offer them to the um, people who was here first, aren't we? Just like Canary Wharf, isn't it? How many people there will say, come out and you'll get first choice, come back, if you've got two million pounds? How much is this, man? One pound. That's very nice, man. Nice price. I was thinking, I saw three, I saw, ah, I can't buy it. It's expensive, man. Wow, man. Charge 150 if you're happy. What are you thinking, man? How much is this? Yeah, it's one pound. Could you uh, say a bit about what your, what your role is and um, I suppose your history in the, in the Elephant Castle area? Uh, I'm a local property uh, consultant, development consultant in the area, and I've been working on various different elements of the project for the last couple of years. But I'm also local as well. And uh, as a young boy, when we used to go past the Faraday building, I used to think that was the elephant compound where they actually kept the beasts. Uh, and my father used to tell me, son, one day, knock it down for me, will you? And here I am. What do you think the perception of the area is from the outside? Uh, unfortunately, um, I think certainly since the 70s, uh, mainly through economic downturn, has disproportionately affected the area, uh, possibly because of the high proportion of council housing up here. Um, it's become seen as a disinvestment area and uh, a bad area. And given the location of the elephant, uh, you're literally a stone's throw from the River Thames. Uh, we're next to Bankside. We're, we're a hundred yards away from one of the richest areas in the world. What the redevelopment of the elephant has sought to do in its planning and in its delivery is to try in some way stitch the elephant into its rightful location, part of Zone 1, part of uh, Neo-London, uh, but at the same time retain its local character, which of course comes in the form of its historic communities.
think it's time for change. We need, need new injection of money, we need new people, and new ideas, and I think it's about time. I mean, it just looks, it just looks old and yeah. stayed, and it needs to be blowing some new newness. So if the elephant in Castle was a person, they'd be a bit a bit old and decrepit, though. There are good things <laughs> about it being old, because you're wise, you've got a lot of yeah. knowledge, and, and things wisdom. like that, and wisdom, yeah. Yeah. but and you need to incorporate learn new thing that you have yeah. to blend both the old and the new. I don't think you can get rid of the old and just put in the new. It has one day the new becomes old as well. Yeah, I mean, that's... I'm just trying to think... Sorry. The it's all right, I'm just trying to think... There's actually exactly from here, you see. Oh, wow. Hmm? See, there's, there's, this is this side, there's a staircase coming down. In fact, that's going to light. Oh, I see. So this is just imagined before anything was here? Yes, this is a, wow. a visual image put in the brochure, went in for planning permission. That's and quite futuristic, isn't it? Looks uh, like something from the future well, even it, now. It's all very much as it, as it Without is Without the satellite dishes, obviously. With, yes. Yeah. And these walkways, the streets of the sky, I think you call them. Yes, you? streets in the air. As you imagined when you were drawing it, did you imagine it be... Well, yes. I mean, of course you know, we people did. People who have wonderful lives here. I mean, of course we did. I mean, there was no... I uh, don't think anyone did, any, anyone did anything other than that. I'm quite sure of it. It's not that Haygate failed. It's that it happens to be right by the Elephant Castle and offers a real estate gain. Mm. For a long time, the thing was to build more homes. Then Mrs Thatcher decided that the trick was actually we sell them off. Hmm? So they stopped building houses and they sold them off, didn't they? Mm. But, and, and the argument was that that was a good thing and the, the, and the market would provide the new housing. But of course it, it hasn't, has it? All this estate now, all the estates are pretty much, they're all boarded up and empty and there's a few people all, living All the boys are boarded up. We can't gain entry to them, I think. So they're quite safe in that respect. So it must feel quite different here now. It must feel quite... Yeah, quiet. Is it like being on a ghost ship? Yeah, it's quiet. Yeah. Do you think people in general really no, want this not, to happen? It's not being redeveloped for them. So do people really know what's going to happen? No, we don't know. I've never seen a design yet of what's going to happen in the footprint. All we know is going to be raised to the ground and then eventually it'll be rebuilt. As no. what? I don't know. This new place that, um, that people are getting quite excited about and some people are getting incredibly angry about. Um, <clears throat> where did this place come from? Whose idea was it? It has come from uh, a professional and statutory driven process, but also, as with all of these projects and all big ideas in the world, there's clearly prime movers and key individuals that have helped to bring that vision about in the form that we're now seeing it. And do you think that motivation is primarily commercial? Or do you think that motivation is to do with um, the improvement of society? That is a $64,000 question and strikes at the heart of this development. <laughs> Kind of night time. Not as cosy as your urban fox. <laughs> might be, not that we have them anymore, but we might have done before there was nobody. Maybe wolfland? Wolf. If you're looking for an animal for the elephant, I'd go for wolves. Really? I've lived in and around here all my life. Yeah, I'd go for wolves. Are you performing a traditional ritual or have you created a new one? 
I'm creating a new one. I'm, I'm collecting information for the switch right now. Right. So I'm talking to people, just getting a sense of the place. And it's all going to change here, isn't it? It's all going to be redeveloped. Tell me about it. How often I've lived through the redevelopment and it will all change at the Elephant three times already. So it's been the redevelopment in the 60s. Yeah. 70s. And now this new redevelopment that's happening. Do you think yeah. anything's going to change at all? Or do you think the old problems just get carried through? Do you know so what they do? They do stuff for buildings. Don't do anything for people. In the performance, I'll have my own real vision um, or revision of, of the area. What would be really nice at, at um, some stage in, in this conversation to get each of your sort of, I suppose, personal visions for this area. Um, there's an official. There's an official vision. I expect there's a model somewhere. Is there a big model somewhere? Who knows? That's <laughs> <laughs> changing model. Yeah. So, um, it would be great if we could just have our hands on the table. <coughs> sweaty hands. <laughs> sweaty hands. <laughs> Um, what we're going to try and do is go on a very short journey, because we haven't got long, but a journey into our imagination. And if you try and keep your minds as clear and open as possible, and I'll guide you on a little journey, and at the end we can say what we saw. I've got to try and embody this place. Mm. I've got to try and somehow... Project it as it was. Yeah, project it. Um, mm. And project it through me, using my voice, using movement. And if I was to project you as an individual and your feelings about it... Well, you could take 20 years and say it was good for me, but... OK. The last 15 years... I've not had to nothing to do with state. All my neighbours are moving, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And other people are coming in and they're not making themselves sociable, like, so you don't get sociable with them, do you? So it lost its heart in that respect, for me, anyway. There's the two distinct periods, a kind of optimism. The first 20 years. The first 20 years, and then that's changing into a sadness. Yeah, the, I lost contact with the estate, in effect, didn't I? Shall I try the sand? You can tell me if it's accurate. Would you be up for that? Yeah, go on. I think I need to test it out on you. Right. Okay. Um, not in words, is it? It's not in words, no. So it's quite tricky to do this. Um, so I think it needs to be... Uh, I need to project it out. It needs to be quite powerful. But I'm quite wary of that sudden change. Mm. So the first sound would be thinking of something celebratory. OK. Something quite clear, something defined. Sad, was it? No, it wasn't that that second sound wasn't right. No, I say it wasn't a sad sound. No. This 
This is what you thought originally. Is this, is this how you thought it would be originally? Yeah, the first sound, but the second sound... Oh, the, yeah, the second, second sound, sound is was the, another... That's the era. kind of sadder sound, yeah. That was the second that sound. That needs to be a very different thing, I think. I think that's almost so too similar. The first one was quite, in your eyes, happy. Well, it was, um, it was, it was clear. I was trying to make it clear and, yeah. and yeah. uplifting. Yeah. Yeah. It was concise. Yeah. Go on then. Okay. So, but as you said, the other one was, it wasn't. It might. It wasn't that unhappy, was it? No. Okay. Okay. I'll try again. I think it needs to be very different sound. Yeah. Okay. Like something's they're agonizing there, aren't they? It felt yeah. like it was. Um, I was breathing in there, trying yeah, to make that sound. It's very it different from a projection. It was an agonizing it was, sound, it which is like unhappy, isn't it? Yeah. So you've got the two volumes there. If you can stick with that, okay. I think it'll work for you. Okay. You've got to be firm with them, though. You've got to be very firm with them because they're, they're, at the end of the day, they've got the second uh, part of this job, the whole of the animal kingdom. What number? Just five. 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 No, you had to carry on there, didn't you? You had to. Say sorry. Good boy. Ten. Arm response when they tried to take him off me. They shot me. Right, shut up. Shut up. There. On the side there. There's a scar there. On the right. side there. That's where the guy was looking after him. But when he wanted to use a dog fight. That's where he got shot there. That's what I'm saying. So he, he didn't feel it. He really didn't feel it. He carried on walking. He just, just carried on walking normally. Put it inside him. Blood everywhere. The bullet was inside him. Got back and then he started to yell and cry. And everything. So. the best time to do the program because it, it shows you what the real life is like. Really? Or whatever you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. What I'm going to try and do in this ritual is embody this transformation. So 
sort of getting a sense of what it was like before, and you've talked a little bit about that, um, what it's like now, and what the kind of vision is, but from a personal perspective as well, what they want it to be. Because um, it's all right having these, these corporate visions, or these uh, scripted visions, but everyone has a personal investment in this place. So what I'm going to do now, if it's all right with you, I'm going to um, be directed by you. If you, you can, you can, yeah. Right. Now we have to think about um, where I start and where I end. Um, so how do you, how do you, how do you envisage that I embody uh, Elephant and Castle as it was? In the form of closing. In the form of closing. Okay. Will you give me some pointers in terms of directing my, my body for that? You can either open your body up to allow things in, or you can close it down to repel. So I have to decide. Okay. Okay. From this very open position, how would you expect me to move into the present? Well, now you have to make choices because you can't actually move in the position you're in. So you have to change the position you're in to move forward. So you need to change to move. You've been neutral in your expression. You've simply moved. You haven't opened or closed. You move with purpose. Why are you moving? What's the point of your movement? The point of the movement is that I need to transform in some way. So this is a, this is a, a posture that's, that's ready to transform. Okay, so you, we now we're in, if we want to make the analogy, where we're having to embrace new things. But we're having to embrace those new things with old arms. So I think for this present position, I don't think this is, this is particularly no, suitable. Not, I feel like I need to be in a position where I can almost do anything. Yes. Okay. Expectation, readiness. Yeah. But there's intention. Yeah, it's intention. To do Where's something. the intention coming from? Intention is coming from the idea that there is definitely a transformation. Right, and it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> according to you, it is. Yeah. No, it's going to. It's not according to okay. me. It's okay. going to happen. Okay. Something's going to happen. Whatever it is. Whatever it is, yeah. something is going to happen. Okay. Buildings are much more difficult to shift than people. Okay. And then move into the next phase. Well, that's an open sea, isn't it? In terms of your aspirations and dreams, can you direct me in any way? Yeah, I'd like to start at a ground floor level and bubble up. And in the manner of the Pied Piper, carry the people with me to the neo world that we're trying to create here. So is that a slow, graceful movement, do you think? I would love it to be a slow, soaring, curvaceous movement. No straight lines, no edges and flow. I would like it to flow like a mighty river. Okay, we're flowing a little bit more easily and more gracefully. We're beginning to feel the flow. Now we have to put intent into what we're doing. Okay. You have to find intent and purpose. Without purpose, we have nothing. You can tap your feet and stand your head. Is that right? I was in the storm to tell you the must. I had an unsunky road. Who moves away the dust? Some people earn a fortune, some others earn a bit. He was for one in trousers, living into the castle fat. He was for one in trousers, living into the castle fat.
At this point, I felt like I had taken on all the voices that I'd heard. Now I needed to go to a wilderness. A place that was away from the everyday world. I needed to isolate myself. To just concentrate on the purpose of the vision. Firstly, it's important to cleanse the space. To get rid of any negative influences. To feel like there are possibilities there. So that you could go anywhere in that space.
their beautiful sails. Their beautiful sails. Their beautiful sails. Your beautiful sails! Your beautiful sails! Your beautiful sails! You know fuck all! You lie out with shit! You shit on your shit!
how was it? It was quite easy, quite easy to get into it. it was, I was surprised. That was the, the first significant thing was it opened out into this sort of grassy um, plain. And there was these really tall, uh, like they were very thin hills. Um, really odd, like cartoon hills almost. And then these seals sitting on the on top of these hills, fat seals. And they just sat there and I had no idea how they got there. So what I try to do, I try to engage with the seals. I try to um, get some reaction from them. And they really just sat there and did nothing. Occasionally they shat and... Um, uh, but not much else, didn't make any noise, didn't look at me, didn't, didn't, didn't respond to me at all. And then it got really dark, then it was quite, um, the, the light got really dim, and I was in this thick kind of fog, but I could feel it, it was like a mist. And I could hear these, these, these sounds, and they sounded like geese, but I, I couldn't see anything. And then I could just feel this sort of slime, and then... I just really had a close look at the slime, and it was, it was the slime was thousands of geese, sticky geese, just totally surrounding me. And the stickiness seemed to get um, more and more pervasive and uh, more and more irritating. And it felt quite scary, as if I really need to, to really get out of this, almost claustrophobic. So both of those were quite horrible. Well, the first one wasn't that horrible, but they weren't, they weren't great. They didn't feel very positive. And then I felt this, um, it's almost like um, a tugging here and here. It might sit outside of my armpits. And I looked down and these little birds, swallows, were, were pecking under my arms. And they were pushing their heads, trying to get in there. And I lifted my arms up. And they just went in and loads more flew in. They were landing in my armpits and building um, small nests, putting mud in there with their beaks and building up these kind of incremental nests that were beautifully formed. I mean, perfect for the shape of my armpit. So that, that felt really good. That felt really good. It was something very, um, felt very special about that attachment they made with me, a very strong bond. It was like, I know these, these swallows are really loyal to their nesting site. And, there's that very strong instinct, and I felt like they had this, that with me. And um, it's like they, that was what they were valuing, the idea that they could have this continuity. And I, I felt like I was um, kind of inhabiting a space that perhaps you occupy in this whole process, a sense of guardianship and the responsibility that comes with that. It felt like the, the most precious thing in that sense was the fact that I was there for them and I was, I was going to be there for a long time. I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't uh, mess around with that. You wouldn't have victim then, would you? <laughs> no, 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 I would. No, because, because I'd be messing around with the generations of them, you know, and I knew, I knew they'd come back for years and years, Lovely. maybe hundreds of years. Maybe it's 
because I'm a Londoner. Hey.